Oh, there we go. Hello, uh, today we're uh, joined by uh, John Varela, who represents District 1 and is the Valley Water uh, Chair Pro Tem of the Valley Water Board of Directors. Um, and welcome today. Thank you, Dennis. It's great to be here. So uh, I now you are actually known officially as John L. Varela. And uh, I, I think we all need to know what the letter L stands for. Well, that's very, very dear to my heart. So John L. Varela. The L represents my father. My father is Lisandro Varela. My uh, grandparents immigrated from Chihuahua, Mexico in the late 1800s. My father was born in El Paso, Texas in 1910. I was born in 1944. And on my birth certificate, my name is Johnny Lisandro Varela. Over the years, my name became John, but I've always have included my father letter initial L on any legal document that I sign he is always there with me, including documents that I sign at Valley One. Well, thank you for that. So much in a letter. So much. Um, and uh, well, why don't we start out with the, uh, just a brief uh, thing on the history of Valley Water, you know, which yes. occurred in yeah. the 20s. Yeah. Uh, well, absolutely. Valley Water is the largest multi-purpose water supply Watershed Stewardship and Flood Management Special District in the state of California. You know, we, we provide a reliable and safe supply of water, enhance streams and watersheds through creek restoration, habitat protection, we provide flood protection for homes, schools, and businesses, and uh, partner with other agencies to provide trails, parks, open space for community and recreation. Community action created Valley Water. In back in the 1920s, there was concern over land subsidence led farmers and business leaders to push for the formation of the Santa Clara Valley Water Conservation Committee. At that time, groundwater supplies were being overpumped, causing the land to subside. This led to the formation of the Santa Clara Valley Water Conservation District in 1929. And over the last almost 100 years, it has merged with smaller flood control districts to become what we are today, Valley One. And here we are a hundred years later. Here we are. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we think of subsidence in terms of Central Valley, but but it, uh, I, yeah, I find it interesting that it, uh, well, can occur in a lot of valleys that uh, have, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, groundwater pumping and uh, have an agricultural focus, and uh, um, you know that uh, you know that history is important. Um, so, I would like to highlight a number of different areas. I mean, we will in other sessions we will have uh, deeper dives in terms of uh, uh, the uh, uh, ed enhanced. Uh, uh, water uh, recycling and, and the pure water experts we uh, are, are talking about uh, as well as gray water and uh, actually we have a session tomorrow called don't call it brine on RO oh. concentrate <laughs> um, and uh, but I would like to highlight a number of things in uh, in district one especially uh, uh, which you know is the biggest district uh, uh, you look at the map it's it's bigger than all the other ones combined, and uh, um, but I, but I don't think it gets its its due a lot, you know. But but it incorporates Morgan Hill, and you are an ex mayor of Morgan Hill and an ex um, head of the Chamber of Commerce, I, I, I believe. And uh, we were um, actually even talking before uh, we started recording about the uh, um, way back when the uh, building ban. That, that occurred back, I guess you were saying it was in the 80s or? Yes, it was in the late, uh, actually early 80s, late 70s, back at that time where we had actual sewage coming up from the ground and it created quite an uproar. 
uh, with the citizens that were occupying Morgan Hill living there. Mm -hmm. So what, what occurred essentially, there was a brief, I don't like to use moratorium, but that's what it was on building and development in uh, housing and, and business uh, until we could resolve that. And that was the formation, the subsequent formation of the collaboration between the city of Gilroy and the city of Morgan Hill to build a wastewater treatment plant, which we are a 40% owner and Gilroy is a 60% owner. So that seemed to solve the problem. It did solve the problem. And from that point forward, as you could see, the city of Morgan Hill and Gilroy have developed. Dennis, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I I we I have a little um, okay. uh, work getting them put on my roof, so I I've, I've been right. uh, muting myself. Uh, okay. while they're, they got a sawzall out. Um, but uh, anyway, that's the South County uh, Regional Wastewater. That's correct. Party, and that's uh, wastewater regional. Yes. Yeah. And so that's, uh, I think, in a... yeah, we sit myself and uh, another director, we sit on that board and we meet uh, monthly and quarterly uh, with the uh, with the groups representing Morgan Hill and Gilroy. And uh, yeah, so that uh, was expanded, I think, from 8.5 to 11 uh, million gallons a day, I think, is that and uh, uh, for... So oh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. so that capacity issue from way back when uh, um, is is not, uh, um, you know, is, is something that kind of been taken care of. Well, we'd like to think so. But yeah, you know, I mean, it's a growing yeah. area. So, you it know, it's growing yeah. and uh, we just want to maintain that as forever if we can. And we're working feverishly with the two communities to make continue that. And uh, so I would uh, actually like to touch on the uh, South County Recycled Water Pipeline Project. Sure. Speaking okay. of water capacity. Sure. So while, while we rebuild Anderson, Anderson Dam, Valley Water is working to ensure Coyote Creek and Coyote Percolation Pond in South San Jose have sufficient water to recharge groundwater and support the surrounding habitat and wildlife who depend on it. To achieve this, Valley Water is undertaking the Cross Valley Pipeline Extension Project, which will extend an existing pipeline by about one quarter mile so that we can feed water into Coyote Creek near the Coyote Creek Golf Club. Currently, that water can only be released into the creek, Coyote Creek, about one quarter mile below Anderson Dam. Once completed, Valley Water will be able to provide up to 22,000 gallons of water a minute directly into Coyote Creek. In addition to the water supply benefit, the flow of water will provide benefits to wildlife and habitat along Coyote Creek. On June 22nd of this year, the Department of Water Resources, the acronym is DWR, awarded Valley Water almost $6 million in grant funding for this vital infrastructure project. The total cost is approximately 20 million so as severe drought persists in Santa Clara County, Valley Water will continue investing in our infrastructure. Great. And uh, um, yeah, so that, uh, I guess there's two pipelines. One was the Cross Valley Pipeline Extension and then uh, the South County Recycled Water Pipeline, uh, you know, as, as well. That, so You're talking about the one in Gilroy, I believe? Yeah, so that... Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, a, a, I guess, a pipeline for a Gilroy uh, recycled water distribution. That, yes, that is. And that's ongoing currently as well. That's to, to provide industrial campuses, water stripping. It's not for, not for um, potable water. Mm -hmm. For use for that. Um, yeah, and, uh, and you mentioned Anderson Dam, so I guess we should address um, that ongoing, that pretty massive yeah, project. Uh, sure as it well. is, There's no question about it. So the Anderson Dam seismic retrofit project is of critical importance to the entire region. As Anderson Reservoir is our county's largest drinking water reservoir. Last year, Valley Water began construction on a tunnel for a large 
outlet pipe that in the future will help drain down Anderson quickly. We need it when needed. It was an incredible milestone to break ground on that tunnel project, and we haven't stopped working since. Fixing Anderson Dam is Valley Water's top priority because it will protect the public from the risks of the dam slumping during a large earthquake and also ensure we can fill it all the way back up and enough with enough water storage to face extended droughts. Originally, the project was limited to making the exterior face stable in event of an earthquake, but investigations determined that we need to rebuild the entire dam and the spillway, basically to overhaul the entire thing. The cost has increased <laughs> by as much as $584 million, bringing the estimated total cost to approximately $1.2 billion to completion largely because of increases in the cost of materials, labor, inflation, all of that. But remember, our critical work there will protect our communities and our regional water supply for generations to come. The area around Anderson is active every weekday with dedicated crew, staff, contractors, consultants who are working to get this first piece of larger Anderson project completely completed quickly and efficiently. Stage one of the project, the tunnel project, is scheduled to be complete in 2024. Stage two, the retrofit portion of the project, will begin immediately after stage one is complete and is anticipated to take up to six to seven years. And rest assured, we are always exploring ways to reduce the construction time and expedite the project. Completing the Anderson project remains Valley Water's highest priority and we are committed to moving toward forward on it as quickly as possible and safely as possible so that we can have this critical water supply back online. Well, we, we definitely want to keep an eye on that and I look forward to celebrating the completion of stage one uh, and the, uh, we the launching of stage two. I think bottles of champagne are required for both of those. And uh, we'll provide that. I'm thinking of the, uh, you know, the ships going off and uh, as well. But uh, and all, that's not the only uh, <laughs> reservoir. Um, uh, and actually, it is kind of funny. Uh, there was a comment made uh, at actually at the Valley Water Summit a couple of Fridays ago yes. about, you know, uh, uh, from a representative of the uh, agricultural community saying, well, you know, we probably going to get the same amount of water overall, you know, every, every year, we just get it in two storms now. Yeah, that and, seems yeah, you're and actually to that. that does have an impact on uh, water storage that, uh, um, you know, it makes it makes it very, very important to be able to have that capacity to store the warm water in the Sierra running off uh, uh, for instance, and, uh, um, you know, capture as much as possible. But yeah, I, I wondered if it, it just had any comments about uh, uh, the Pacheco development. I do, I do. And that comment that was made at the Water Summit was from Tim Kiala from the Kiala yes. farming community, which is one of the tenured families that have been in the South County for many, many years and uh, wonderful people. So yeah, Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project is a collaboration between Valley Water, the San Benito County Water District, and Pacheco Pass Water District, and is a strategic and long-term investment toward ensuring a more reliable supply of safe, clean drinking water in the face of climate change. The project will also reduce the frequency and severity of water shortages during the droughts protect our drinking water supply and infrastructure and improve fish habitat. The Pacheco Reservoir is approximately 60 miles southeast of San Jose, just north of the Pacheco Pass Highway, which is Route 152, near an existing imported water pipeline, which we spoke about briefly. The project will expand the existing Pacheco Reservoir from currently 5,500 feet, acre feet to 140,000 acre feet. By way of reference, that's almost twice the size of Anderson. This will enable us to store water in wet years as well as imported storage for
for emergency drought use, which would help reduce the impact of water shortage. The increased storage capacity at Pacheco will be enough to supply up to 1.4 million residents with water for a year in an emergency and will nearly equate to the capacity of Valley Water's 10 other reservoirs combined. So expanding Pacheco Reservoir will double the amount of water we can store above ground. This will make us less reliant on our groundwater supply during droughts. In addition to improving our region's ability to store water for droughts and emergencies, the expansion of the Pacheco Reservoir will allow a more robust year-round water flow in Pacheco Creek. This will improve the quality of fish habitat downstream of the dam, such as the threatened South Central California coast steelhead. We are anticipating construction to start 2025 and to be operational in 2032. 2032 is looking to be quite a year, <laughs> considering that's the projected time of Anderson uh, stage two and, yeah. and, and this. Um, while we're on the reservoir thing, uh, up the road uh, on 152, continue east, you hit a big blue space called uh, the San Luis Reservoir, and, and you're on the board of that, and uh, Valley Water is a member of that kind of coalition. I wondered if uh, you wanted to address, uh, well, the 2 million acre foot uh, reservoir there with that has expansions uh, plans as well. So you're talking about the San Luis um, Delta Mendota Water District. Yes, I, I always shorten uh, it, sorry. The large, it's, it's a large group. Yeah, a large, I can only, yeah, need, you know, yeah. have so many letters that I can Sure, keep so Valley Water, we meet monthly. In fact, we had our board meeting there yesterday and we meet with water irrigation districts, water managers, very much like Valley Water that are in the Central Valley and also small, medium and large agriculture both growers and producers from Bakersfield, just north of Sacramento. And of course, water supply is, is most important to the entire region of the state, but very much so in that region because the amount of agriculture that it represents. San Luis Reservoir is our single largest reservoir that was built in the 1960s. Uh, the late uh, great Governor Brown then and President John F. Kennedy broke ground in 1962 on that particular location. And we were there for the, for the re-breaking of ground uh, a month ago, directors and I, with the San Luis Delta Mendota Water Authority Board of Directors and others to incorporate the now new rise of 10 feet uh, suppressed surrounding the Anderson, uh, correction, the San Luis Reservoir. So we pump water to that reservoir. We pump water down to Santa Clara Valley from San Luis Reservoir. Very important, a water storage facility in our region. And that you mentioned uh, Governor Brown, that that was Pat Brown. Yeah, uh, Governor Pat Brown. Yeah. He was also very much part of the water conveyance uh, from Northern California to Southern California. Oh, yeah. He, he wasn't just involved in the UC system. That's true. Yeah, he was very involved <laughs> in the state. And yeah. was his son. Very big builder. Um, and uh, uh, there's a couple, uh, well, other things we wanted to uh, just hit on um, that again don't uh, get a, usually get a lot of discussion, and and one is um, Valley Waters Handbook for Agriculture, uh, water use efficiency. Uh, obviously, um, well, in your district actually has the majority of, of agriculture uh, in the Valley Water area in Santa Clara County, um, and uh, uh, you've been involved in. Uh, you know, working uh, with growers and and have I mean for years and, and based on on your background. When I when I talk about agriculture in our region, I usually start out with at one point in time, this region was called the Valley of Hearts Delight. Good point. So we used to process, <laughs> we used to process, grow and process apricot chips. During the late seventy mid seventies, we developed a new thing called a silicon chip. So we, we went from the Valley of Heart's Delight processing apricot chips to Silicon Valley processing silicon chips. And as we know, agriculture that was very much a part of the fabric of what Santa Clara County was all about has shrunk quite a bit. But 
large remnants of agriculture still exist in the district that I represent, District 1, which is Morgan Hills, San Martin, Gilroy, and some parts of the northern part in the southern part of San Jose. So it's vitally important. So Valley Waters Handbook for Agriculture Water Use Efficiency describes how to integrate into farm operations the tools that are available to our Santa Clara County growers, including irrigation systems, fitness and distribution uniformity, irrigation scheduling and evaporatorization. Wait a minute. Evapotranspiration. <laughs> that is a tough one. You need a head start. Somebody's trying to throw a hardball at me. Maximizing the amount of marketable crop produced per unit water consumed. Using the outline irrigation calculator and evaluating available water capacity. Soil moisture monitoring, including calculating soil moisture and describing guidelines for placing sensors. Setting irrigation run times for sprinkler and drip irrigation. Yeah. So, I mean, this is under the kind of umbrella of precision agriculture, I think Very is the so. current yeah. term. And it is in a way combining the Valley of Heart's Delight, which I always think of my mother-in-law who moved to Santa Clara in 1960 and uh, uh, really did not like the term <laughs> Silicon Valley, well, but yeah. it's using a lot of the Silicon Valley innovation and technology yeah. to, you know, have a new, hopefully, Valley of Heart's Delight and, uh, um, you know, and get the best use, especially get the best use of water uh, and resources. Uh, so with that, I, uh, Chair Varela, just wanted to thank you for your time. Uh, uh, on this and, and highlighting District 1 and Morgan Hill and uh, Santa Clara Valley Agriculture, uh, among other uh, things, as well as all the different uh, projects. So um, I certainly hope to have you back sooner, but certainly by 2032, when all this is done, we, uh, we should really uh, do this again. Thank you, Dennis. I'm looking forward to the entire program for Waterpalooza. Thank you for your stewardship and what you're doing, your guidance and your leadership. And I'm very happy and pleased to represent Valley Water and District 1 and our entire board of directors and half of Valley Water. Thank you for inviting me to participate today.